Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will create these four watermelon shapes using simple modeling techniques and apply the materials as well. So let's start with our first shape. Using a cube, go in edit mode, select the top face and make it smaller. In the middle of the object, add a loop cut with Ctrl R, select the bottom middle edge and move it down. The object seems to be too thick. Make the object size slightly thinner. I will move the object above the grid as well. Now add a 3 level subdivision modifier using Ctrl 3. Right click and select smooth shade. We will refine the shape more as it looks too much round. In the edit mode, add one horizontal loop cut and slide it down. On the side, add two loop cuts, use mouse scroll and scale them out to make the object ends sharper. You can select the top vertices or the top edge in the middle and move it up. This is going to be the overall main shape. You can make any changes if you need to. Let's create and apply some materials now. Switch to material preview mode. Create a new material. Give it a green color. Add another new material and give it a red color. To apply this material, first go in edit mode. Turn on X-ray view. You can use shortcut Alt Z. So we can see and are also able to select all faces from the back as well. Click the assign button to apply the red material on the selected faces. We will make some adjustments in the shape of the object. Add one loop cut and slide it down so the red part covers more area. Add another one more loop cut. Create a white color material and select the faces in the loop at the lower bottom and assign the white color material. You can also select any edge loop and press G two times to slide it along the object surface. Let's add some seed objects in the middle. Press Shift A and add a UV sphere. Scale it down and position it on the object. Shade smooth the object and assign a new black color material. Using Alt T, make some duplicate instance copies and place them around. To further refine the shape of the seeds, you can go in sculpt mode and using the grab brush, slightly make changes to the shape. As we used Alt T to create instances, these changes will reflect on the other copies as well. This completes our first shape. You can make any changes as you like. To keep things organized and easier to manage in the scene, select all these objects and press M to create a collection and place them in it. Here you can rename it, assign a color and turn it off. Moving to the next object. Add a cylinder with 12 sides. Rotate it 90 degrees. You can use shortcut RX90. Make it thinner. In the edit mode, turn on X-ray view. Select the middle two vertices on both sides and press J to connect them. Do the same for the back side as well. In the edit face mode, select all the top faces and press X to delete them. Next, select all open edges on the top. Press F to add a face to close it. Select the front, top and the back faces and press I to inset faces. Turn on edge rail setting to keep the shape straight. I will add one more set of inset faces in the inner side. Press Ctrl 3 to add a 3 level subdivision modifier. Right click and select smooth shade. In the edit mode, add two loop cuts and slide them outside towards the ends. Switch to material preview 
and start assigning the materials which we have already created. First add a green material. Next in the edit mode select the inner faces on both sides. Assign a red material. It may not look right at first but we can select the next loop of faces and assign the same material. I will add one more edge loop and assign a white color material to these faces. And this completes the second shape. You can make any adjustments here if you like by sliding the edges pressing G two times. Finally let's add the seeds. We will simply reuse the same object which we created earlier. Turn on last model collection and make a duplicate copy of the seed and drag it out of the collection. Make some copies and position the seeds. Select everything here and make a new collection for this model. I would like to add small refinement and modeling tip here. In X-ray view, select all the vertical edges on the top. Right click and select subdivide. This will add a horizontal loop cut. This method works when sometimes control R loop cut method is not working. Now we can slide the edge by pressing G two times to sharpen the top part. Let's start with the third shape. I will slightly speed up this part of the video as most of the modeling process is going to be same as before. Add a UV sphere, change the segments to 12 and rings to 8. Go in edit mode, select the top half faces and delete them. Select the top open edges and press F to fill this open area. Create two sets of inset faces. Add a three level subdivision modifier, shade smooth the object. Switch to material preview and assign the green material first. Next, select the inner middle face and assign the red material. To make it look right, select the outer face loop and assign the red material to it as well. Create an edge loop and assign the white material to the newly added face loop. To add seeds, reuse the object from the previous model and drag it out of the collection. Position some copies on the top of the object. Select everything and put it in a new collection. One thing we can see here, if we move or rotate the base, the seeds do not move with it. To link them, first select all the seeds and in the last select the watermelon base. Then right click, go to parent option and select object. You can also use control P shortcut. This will create a parent child hierarchy. If we move, rotate, change the scale of the base, all the seeds will update accordingly. You can use shortcut Alt P to remove this link. Rotate the view so we can see the bottom side faces. We will select alternate column of faces and assign a new material with slightly light green color. And this completes the third shape as well. Now we will move to the final shape. Add a UV sphere and change the segments to 21 and rings to 8. Rotate the object along X axis with RX90 shortcut. Go in edit mode. Turn on X-ray view. In the front view, press C and brush over to make a selection of all the above faces, side faces and delete them. So we are only left with a slice of faces at the bottom. Select the edges on one open side and press F to make a face. Repeat the same on other side as well. Next, select both faces and press I to create three sets of inset faces. Turn on edge rail to keep them straight. Add a two level modifier with control to shade smooth the object. The shape may look slightly bent in the middle. To fix it, 
select the top edge and control B to bevel it with one segment so it looks straight and sharp. Let's switch to material preview and assign the materials. The process is same as before, selecting the faces and assigning different color materials. On the middle face, assign a red color. On the outer face loop, assign a white color. On the bottom side, select alternate column of faces and assign the light green color. And this completes our final shape. You can reuse the seat objects and add them on top. In case you used a linked seed object shown in a dotted line, first remove any parent object relation with Alt P. You can also change the orientation type to local to position the seeds objects easily. Make sure to change it back to global. I will place all these objects in their own collection. Now we will go through an overview of how we will set up the presentation and rendering. You do not have to follow exactly like I have shown here. Feel free to experiment with your own changes. I have placed all the models over a slender object. For the lighting, I am using a sunlight coming from the side with 20 strength and a slightly orange color. For the background color and overall lighting, I am using this world node setup as shown, which uses an HDR map for adding some additional lighting to the scene and hiding it as well, showing only one solid background color. In the render properties, we have ambient occlusion on, screen space reflections is on, the shadow size is 4096 for high quality. In the color management, we are using filmic mode with high contrast settings. You can try checking other modes to see the different results. And from here, you can continue working with your own adjustments and changes. There are many different ways to model things in Blender and not everything has to be complex. This completes the tutorial. I hope you have found it useful in some way. If you like to see more in the future, then please consider subscribing, giving this video a like and turn on notification bell for this channel. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.